Hi everybody, today I'm going to teach you how to do a Brumel splice without the need for a splicing needle. Um, a splicing needle is the tool of choice normally for thicker lines. It's a hollow needle that you can actually um, push through the line and it's actually one of the easier ways of splicing. But however, there are no super thin ones that work on the really thin race lines that we use um, for kite race foiling, etc. And also you might not have access to um, a splicing needle like that. So I'm going to teach you how to do it with a simple splicing tool like this, which is just essentially um, a steel wire loop. And what I use for my thin racing lines is actually a guitar string that's doubled over like this, because um, there's nothing really that fits through better when you have those one millimeter and 0.8 millimeter lines. So first thing you're going to need, you're going to need a ruler to measure. You're going to need your line your splicing tool, knife to cut your lines, um, and a marker to uh, mark the positions where you're going to make the splice. I'm gonna show you how to do it on a five millimeter rope. That's a lot easier to see than if I would do it on a really thin line. Um, I just have to get onto the points of the bury. The bury is essentially where the line basically gets put back into itself. Basically, that's the actual spliced area. Um, it's important that you have this length right. Okay, It varies for the diameter of the line you are using. Um, typical recommendations from most rope companies is at least 50 to 60 times the diameter. Typically on my race lines, I use 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters, so that's more than enough. Um, and it's also important for the strength of the line that you do build it a nice taper um, into the line. I will show you how to do that at the end of the splice. All right, let's get started. First of all, you're gonna obviously choose where the end of your line is going to be. Um, I'm just gonna put it sort of here. Yeah, you know, obviously you're gonna be a bit more accurate with that when you're doing your own lines, right? Now, I then you're gonna decide on how long your loop's gonna be. I typically I just double over the line at my marked point, and today I'm gonna do a loop that's about five centimeters long. Okay, so I'm gonna place that there, measure five centimeters from the end of the loop, and I mark those two points. Okay, now I've got three markings there. And now obviously, I would want for the five millimeter line, that would be five times 50. So I'd want 25 centimeters of berry. Um, for this example, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. It's slightly shy of that, it's about 20 centimeters. Um, but remember, if you're doing it for yourself, if you wanna be 100% safe, make sure you have at least 50 times the diameter of the rope. So let's get to the splice. I'm going to take the point, the marking, that is closest to the actual like frayed end of the line. I'm gonna push that together and then I'm gonna Find the middle of that and then put my splicing tool through. I'm going to widen the tool up a little bit yep, to make it easier to pull through. Now I'm going to take the other end of that, double that over and grip that onto the splicing tool. Then I'm going to use the splicing tool to pull that through. On these thicker lines, you don't even really need to have a tool for this. I'm gonna pull it along and let the line invert, okay? So now, that's the first part done. Now I'm just gonna recenter that. You've got your second marking here and you've got your end marking there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that second marking here, you're gonna push that together. Again, find the middle. And then you're going to invert the next part. So I typically, again, find the point at the end of the line, 
fold the line there, line up the tool, and then pull it through the new hole. Pull that in so it's also nice inverted. And then pull that really tight. So now we're going to get to the important part of this. Um, now we're going to get to the bury, which is essentially taking this part of the line and basically sleeving it back in or splicing it back into the actual flying part of the line. Now remember, this is important. Again, I can't stress this more, that you want about 50 times the diameter of the line in length. Okay. Um, all right. The second important part is that you get a nice taper. Just taking the end like this and um, sleeving it in will leave you with a very sort of bulky um, end piece, which is actually what we call stress razor. And that will typically be the point where your lines will break. Um, a lot of kite manufacturers actually do it that way with their lines. And it's not the best way because it actually creates a weak point. So the way I do the taper is I fray the line at the end here quite a bit. Okay, just open up the braid. Yeah. Some people will cut a shallow angle into it along the angle of the braid. I typically find that opening the braid like this is actually gives me a nice smoother taper. Okay. It's also much easier to put the line in. So now how do I do that? I'm going to take the end point at about another four or five CM to that end point. Um, yeah, Cause if you're too short, you'll just pull out the strands on the end, open it up here. And then again, find the middle of the braid and slowly work my sleeving needle through. Just be careful that you don't push the needle all the way out or the sleeving tool all the way out through the braid. So you're going to work your way along there. Now you've come to the end as close to that end line as possible. Push out the needle, get your ends, push them through. I typically roll it over and lock it there and then pull that line into it. I typically, I rotate a little bit. This helps getting the line in. And you can slowly pull it out all the way. So once you got it out, give that end a pull line. Make sure that your actual end of the loop is lined up the way it's supposed to. No loose parts. And then lock the splice. All done. As you can see, we've got our double lock here. This prevents the line from slipping. And here we have a quite nice taper along here. So we don't have a stress razor. All right. So that's how you do a Brumel splice using only steel loops or splicing tool. Um, remember the important parts are that the actual part holding the load is the actual splice. The Brumel lock is actually just there to prevent any sliding when it's not under load. Um, and remember, rule of thumb is 50 times the diameter of the rope. So for example, for a one millimeter flying line, that would be five centimeters. Okay. Um, and the important part is again, that you get a nice taper at the end of that to reduce any um, stress razors and that you don't get any stress points where it will break there. Okay, hope it helped you out. See you on the water. Have fun. Rock on.